Um, hello, my name is Bertrand Benello, I'm the director of the Beast. My favorite film? Yeah. Depends on, it depends on the day. It yeah. changes every day. Okay, The Sunrise. By Murnau. It's a film made in the 20s. Uh, it's more modern than most of the films I see today. It's visually incredible, beautiful love story, heartbreaking, but visually it's incredible. Uh, Pickpocket. Robert, Robert Bresson. And of the 50s. Uh, it's, it's bec I think the last scene is one of the most heartbreaking I've ever seen. And in one sentence, you just rewind the film and see it in another way. Mm -hmm. Not very original, but it comes from my childhood. I would say The Godfather. It's not about the Mafia, it's about family. And I feel very connected uh, as I'm from Italian family. It, uh, I feel very close from the film. But you know, Godfather has three. One, two, three. Yeah, for me it's one film. <laughs> yeah, if, if you want me to pick one up, it's the two. I'm gonna pick up an Asian film. Uh, uh, Flowers of Shanghai. It's uh, uh, hypnotic and a sensual and political film. Yeah, I think Harry, Harry James is one of my favorite authors. He's one of the biggest uh, searcher in the uh, soul tournaments. And uh, at one moment, I really wanted to do a, a melodrama. And the melodrama drove me back to this novel, which is on my desk for, for ages, because uh, this particular novel, which is a late novel in his career, is uh, one of the most heartbreaking and beautiful and awful uh, novel, and it is the essence of melodrama. So. Uh, I went back to the novel, I just took like the argument and uh, in the novel it takes place in a few years and I made it over 120 years. Uh, I wanted to, to, to go further, you know, to extend it and uh, to have more, uh, 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 yes, to have more, more time in a way. Yes, you can find some arguments in 1910 and say it's that period. Uh, or in 2014, but basically there is only one reason, it's the fear of love, uh, which is the beast. The beast is the fear of love. And when the character of Gabriel, uh, played by Elias Sidou, understands that uh, in 2044, it's too late. Uh, that's why it is a melodrama. I mean, in a melodrama, you have two people, everyone knows they should be in love and together. The audience knows it, but they do not know it. Um, in 1910, she's the one that is very scared of abandoning herself. In 2014, he's the one that is scared. He, he expresses it in a very violent way, you know, because it's another period, it's another country. Uh, but basically, it's what it is. And she can see that in him, and she tries to save him, but it's not possible. And in 2044, which is the present of the film in a way, because it's uh, where they live and now they go back in the past. But uh, as I said, when she understands, it's too late because it's done all the process uh, that, clears, uh, that cleans from emotions. Um, well, the present of the film, it's 2044. And when I started to write, like four or five years ago, I could not imagine that, in fact, today we would be so close from that, in many ways. AI is one of you know, the main subjects uh, of the year, and uh, in the film it's very in, 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 important. Uh, uh, it says that, in fact, human being fucked everything up and AI took the power. But the price to pay is very expensive. 
Uh, so maybe I should have set up not in 2044, but 2027, because I think we're very close from that. Of course, emotions today, uh, because of the virtuality, because of uh, the illusion of being connected, because of uh, all that, are very fragile. And uh, I can see around me only fragile people even if they do not know, if, even if they do not say. And the film is also talking about this. The, the most beautiful uh, part about love would be 1910, because the feelings are really expressed. They're, they're said in a, in a simple way, with some impossibilities, but it's the most beautiful way to say them. And this after disappears. Well, originally I wrote the film for Lea, uh, which I know for a long time, and she's been in two of my previous films, and uh, Lea and uh, Gaspar Uliel. Uh, Lea, for me, she was the only one that could, French actress, that could be in the three periods, in 1910, in 2014, and in 2044, because she has something timeless, in a way. At the same time, very modern, but she can cross ages. And she has a kind of mystery that, you know, uh, you do not know, even if you do like very big close-up, you don't know what's behind her, inside her. And camera loves these kind of faces. And then um, Gaspar Uliel had an accident, a uh, skiing accident a few weeks before the shoot. So I had to replace him and I did not want to take another French actor because it would be too close. And, uh, so I did a, a classical um, casting process in the US and in the UK. And I met a lot of actors for three or four months. And at the end, the last one I met was George. I went to London and I met him. And after a couple of minutes, I mean, the test he was doing was so good as an acting, but I could feel the uh, human quality also. So I brought him back to Paris and to, to see him with Lea, to see the couple. And for me it was obvious. Yeah. Yes. If, even if you make a film that takes place in 1910, you want it to ring a bell today. Uh, you're always obsessed by being connected with the contemporary uh, questions and uh, atmosphere and feelings and, and problems, uh, even if you have like weird paths to get to it. Uh, for ex I was talking about the AI. It's five years ago. No one was talking about that, you know. And I think it's important that artists have this kind of feeling that you know of things that are going to happen or are happening. And this goes through any kind of stories, but he has to ring a bell with, with today. Well, it's been a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed it, and I just wanted to say goodbye and see you soon. <laughs>